I've noticed on my recent flights that the actual weather has been significantly different than forecast. And this most recent trip to Sedona was no exception. It's the closest I've come to airframe icing. It's like we're picking up a little bit of ice on the wing there. To understand how we got in this situation, let's back up a bit. All right, we're loaded up and gonna fly to Sedona. The weather's looking good. There might be some uh, light rain showers when we get there, uh, but the overcast looks pretty high. I think we're gonna be under it coming in, so we're on a VFR flight plane unless uh, we start having showers or more clouds or whatever, just because it's a lot easier to get out of here on a VFR flight plane, so we can always pick up IFR in the air. It can take a long time to get released from my home airport on an instrument flight plan, since it's so close to Burbank and Van Nuys Airport, so we often depart under visual flight rules. Uh, Cherokee, one Bravo Whiskey. Do you have the uh, YouTube channel? <laughs> oh yeah, that's Mickey. How's it going? I'm good. My buddy in Albuquerque, he's the one that uh, told me about it. Oh, that's awesome. Yeah, I just flew to Albuquerque. Maybe, was he a controller over there? Yeah. Oh, awesome. Cherokee 631 Bravo Whiskey, runway 12, clear for takeoff, wind 1305. Clear for takeoff, runway 12, 631 Bravo Whiskey. Thank you. Power is good. Pitches are all green. Our speed's alive. Push is heavy. Yep. Uh, you can feel it. That's funny. You and I know each other very well. Maybe I'll fly a little today. Yeah. For one bump whiskey, radar contact, two miles north of Lightman. Reasonable navigation. C4 climb 9,500 groups. Oh, oh, nav. Climb in north of 9,500. Thanks, one bump whiskey. This was our first flight trying out the Mountain High Pulse Demand Oxygen System. Turn off, first click. Oh, my eyes are watering. <laughs> I made a full review video about it, so make sure to check that one out after this. So we're in cruise on the way to Sedona, 9,500 feet. Uh, we got about a 20 knot tailwind, which is awesome. And um, the forecast and current conditions have changed a little bit in Sedona. The forecast for our route from LA to Sedona called for cloud bases at 11 or 12,000 feet, with the freezing level at 10,000 feet or so. There was also an icing air mitt for moderate ice starting at 14,000 feet, much higher than we would need to fly. You can check out the weather on the Dynon here, and um, we got scattered at 3,300 feet and then scattered at 4,500, broken at 6,000. It looks like we probably will get some light rain um, showers in the vicinity as the forecast. So the clouds were lower than forecast and rain had come earlier than expected. I started thinking about picking up an IFR clearance to get through the weather. I wonder if we should just pick up an IFR and see what the approaches would be. I know there's a runway three. Yeah, it's just one GPS runway three. But yeah, it's a T kind of approach. Let's do that. I don't love our new co-pilot. <laughs> I know, it won't, be, it won't be many times. We've been going to Sedona once a year for several years, and this time I brought my new Trek mountain bike. If while we are in Sedona, if it keeps you from being a grumpy old man, then uh, it'll be worth it. Yeah, usually I want to get up and get out and get going in the early in the morning. These guys like to sleep in a little bit, so I'll try to go on some bike rides on my own. A lot of it. In the morning. Not a little bit. We'll see. Sedona's got some great trails that we usually hike, but I couldn't pass up the opportunity for some epic mountain biking. And it was awesome. Yeah, LA Center, Cherokee 631, Bravo Whiskey. We're at VFR level 9,500 right now. Um, looking to pick up an IFR into Sedona, Sierra Echo Zulu. Which way did you file an IFR flight plan? Uh, negative, did not file an IFR flight plan. Just uh, wanted to get a pop-up more Bravo Whiskey. I've almost always been able to call up ATC and get a pop-up IFR clearance, usually with an approach controller. You guys need to contact flight service uh, on your other radio and uh, file a flight plan with them, and then, uh, then we can get you going that way. Okay, Roger, one bro, what's next? But I've since learned that many center controllers will ask that you contact flight service and file an IFR flight plan, especially if they're busy. Riverside Radio, Cherokee 631, Bravo Whiskey. Uh, I'm looking to file an IFR flight plan. I'm in the air over needles right now. November 631, Bravo Whiskey. I proceeded to give flight service the standard flight plan details. Route of flight, cruising altitude, time and route, fuel on board, etc. Your flight plan is filed. Is there anything else I could do for you? Uh, 
Uh, no, thank you. I really appreciate it. Thank you so much. 631 Bravo Whiskey. LA Center, Cherokee, 631 Bravo Whiskey. We've got an RFR flight plan now on file. I'd like to pick it up. Bravo Whiskey, are you able 1 1000? Uh, prefer to stay uh, lower than that, 1 Bravo Whiskey, if that's possible. I figured with the freezing level around 10,000 feet, we might risk icing if we got into the clouds at 11,000, so staying lower VFR until they'd give us 10,000 IFR seemed like a good plan. Uh, we'll just stay VFR uh, until we get out of that area then. One well, Bravo Whiskey, I don't want to go any higher. Bravo Whiskey, Roger. We were doing navigation, but we talked to Albuquerque here in about 30, 40 miles. They have lower MEAs on the other side. All right, great, perfect. Thanks a lot, One Bravo Whiskey. So he said we got to go to 11,000 in this area, and that might put us in the cloud. So, like, there's really no reason we have to do it. I was just kind of trying to get on an IFR uh, flight just to prepare, um, you know, for when it's rain or we have to descend through like a little scatter layer or something. So yeah, the MEA here is uh, 10,000 you can see, but um, he probably would have given it to us if I was like, no, really 10,000, but maybe not. Albuquerque, Center Cherokee, 631 Bravo Whiskey, level 9,500. Cherokee, 631 Bravo Whiskey, Albuquerque, Center Red, you looking for an IFR uh, clearance? Yeah, I was thinking we would uh, pick up the IFR, um, but the other controller wanted us to climb to 1-1000. I just didn't want to go that high. We're, we're not in IMC now. and love to stay as low as possible. One Bravo Whiskey. One Bravo Whiskey. Roger, uh, I can get you a clearance to Sedona at 1-0000. That's the lowest I can go. Okay, yeah, let's let's try 1-0000. One, one Bravo Whiskey. Stand by. And number 61 Bravo Whiskey, just want to make sure you are capable of maintaining your own terrain obstruction clearance until reaching 1-0000. Yes, I am. I think we'll be in, still in VMC-1 Bravo Whiskey. Number 631 Bravo Whiskey, Roger, you're clear direct Sedona. IFR clearance, climb in 10,000. Clear direct Sedona, climb maintain 10,000. 631 Bravo Whiskey. All right, so now we're on the IFR flight plan, 10,000 feet, and looks like we're coming up on some clouds. We've got um, some weather on the HDX here. I can show you that. And you can see the weather there on the radar going into Sedona. So you guys, it might get a little bumpy as we go through the clouds or getting a little rain and stuff, but it's all good. We are at um, 35 degree outside air temperature, so we'll definitely be watching for icing. Guys, look at this cloud over here. We're just under it, and we may go through it a little bit. We've never had so much as a cloud in the sky all the other times we've flown to Sedona. So this trip was a little different. On all our other trips, our focus while in Sedona has been hiking. And while we did a lot of that this time, I made a real effort to find new and interesting things to do. We ended up doing a really cool glass blowing workshop and made these awesome bowls and Goomba made a super cool paperweight. We also drove over to Jerome, an old mountain mining town. We're in Jerome, Arizona, and we are ghost hunting. Let's see if we can find some ghosts at this old mining town. We never found any ghosts, but it was a fun little adventure. Number one, Bravo Whiskey, I do not have access to the current weather at Sedona, uh, but we are shooting IFR approaches at Flagstaff and Prescott. Uh, would you like to get set up for the RNAV Runway 3? Yes, um, uh, RNAV Runway 3, affirmative, and uh, I'm receiving the one minute weather as we speak, one Bravo Whiskey. One Bravo Whiskey, Roger. One able to proceed direct to do so for the RNAV runway 3, unless you want to uh, start it straight in at XCD. Uh, just give me a second to look at the terrain between me and there, one Bravo Whiskey. Roger. The controller was offering me a more direct route into the approach, but I decided to accept direct to the initial approach fix instead, because the route there would keep me over lower terrain and closer to roads, in case I started picking up ice or had any other emergency issues. Yeah, I, I would love direct Juso just to stay over the lower terrain and some roads over there. One Bravo Whiskey. 
Air one Bravo Whiskey, proceed direct to so to join the approach. Maintain one zero thousand ten thousand. Proceed direct Juso, maintain 10,000, uh, expecting runway 3 GPS to sit on a white whiskey. As we entered the clouds, we are at 10,000 feet. The cloud bases were about 2,000 feet lower than expected. The temperature was really close to freezing. And I noticed we were starting to fly through some precipitation. In all honesty, I had a hard time telling if it was rain, sleet, or even snow but I knew I had to keep a really close eye on the wing for ice accumulation. It was tough to tell if anything was building up, but I could see the precipitation was getting stronger. ice on the wing there. You can see it kind of sliding off, so it's not really accumulating, but I sure do love having the black wing tip there. Uh, nothing on the windshield. Uh, we're right at the freezing level. Tango, be a little 30, 33 degrees, so I'm really keeping an eye on it. I still have ground contact and stuff over there, and we're about to descend on this approach, so I think we're totally good. We're coming into some a little bit lower terrain. Sir, Tugger 1 Bravo Whiskey, one two miles from Juso, cross Juso, enter above 9,100. Third GPS runway 3 approach, to Sedona. Okay, cross Juso at um, enter above 9,100. Clear GPS runway 3, Sedona, 631 Bravo Whiskey. We began our descent out of the clouds, and I was still watching the wing for icing. All right, cool. So the wind is coming down runway three, which is the approaches for runway three. So that's great. We can land runway three, and uh, we got the weather. Our instrument, flight instruments are set. I set the barometer. Radios are ready. Sedona CTAF is on deck. Initial approach for acceleration. We are told to cross at uh, 9,100. After that, we'll descend to 8,000. There's no timing on this missed approach. It's a GPS approach. DA is 6,140. Are there crosswinds? No, it's light winds. Our missed approach procedure is going to be climb 120,000, 12,000, direct to Mingy. All right, we're making the right turn. We can descend down to 8,000. By the way, if you want to see a longer form, more unedited version of my instrument flights with really cool multi-view camera angles, come join our Patreon membership. There's a great back catalog of instrument flights and approaches, and I'm adding more all the time. So everyone, Bravo Whiskey, you can advise cancellation in the air. This frequency here on the ground via 126.37, change advice frequency proof. I canceled IFR, flew visually, but still follow the GPS approach for guidance. It was a real treat to see rainy Sedona from the air, and it was unlike any of our other approaches in there. I was definitely a little nervous to land on the wet runway, since we don't get tons of experience with that in Southern California. The landing was one of my best, and we ended up having a great time in Sedona as usual. If you enjoyed this video, please support this creative project by joining our amazing Patreon community, where you'll get benefits like access to our Discord chat server, exclusive bonus content, monthly Zoom hangouts, merch discounts, and the awesome feeling of knowing you're supporting our efforts to create the best aviation content on the internet. Until next time, thanks for coming along on the journey with me.